give you a bit of a game okay, name association. Yeah. We're going to go through it as much as we can until time runs out, I suppose. And if we've got extra time, we'll do a few more questions. Uh, sure. I'm going to give you a sentence. And okay. you give me the first name that comes to your mind when I give you this description of somebody. It can be from any promotion, any locker room. Sure. And the first one is the funniest person in the locker room. The funniest person in the locker room. Uh, boy, there there are a lot of funny guys. Um, funniest guy in the locker room. Uh, that would have one of those right off the top of the head. It would be like Midian was hilarious and was kept around really for just locker room morale. <laughs> I mean, you know. Brad Armstrong was was a really funny guy. Everyone too. says Brad Armstrong. This might as well yeah. be say Brad Armstrong question. Everyone says Brad. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Brad uh, Midian. Uh, um, trying to think of some other ones. Blue Meanie is a very funny, entertaining guy. Um, yeah, those were the ones come right off the top of my head. Uh, the most beautiful uh, lady performer in real life. Uh, uh, well, when when Sable showed up, um, he, she really made an impression in the locker room. I mean, she would walk through and everyone would stop. I mean, that was without a doubt. She she was you know as far as physical attractiveness. I mean, she epitomized it. Um, as far as just beautiful woman. I mean, all the girls really. I mean, they they were all terrific people, and you know awesome in and out of the ring and you know um yeah they you know and of course clearly i mean they're physically attractive as well so next one smelliest wrestler <laughs> smelliest uh back in the smoky mountain days for sure was balls mahoney <laughs> when he was boo bradley Might he well just was call that the balls mahoney question <laughs> yeah he was dis- he was just pra- he was basically frankly he was disgusting yeah at that time <laughs> it, we rode one time <laughs> You know, Glenn Jacobs driving this whole beat up car and Killer Kyle is Killer Kyle was working a program at the time in, in the territory with uh Boo with Balls Boney and he refused to wash his gear because balls smelled so bad he was not going he was gonna get him back and he was not gonna wash his gear. So the two of them stunk to high heaven. And uh uh it's me, Ricky Morton sitting in between me, and balls is on the other side, and balls has got his arm up. And around Ricky, and when we, when we get out of the car and we go in the in the locker room, Ricky's whole right side smelled like balls. Of armpit. Oh. He was so mad, and he had to go and take a shower because he had to get the the stench off of him. It was if you wrestled him and you 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 walked back to the locker room, you now had the that odor that stench on you from him. Uh, yeah, he was pretty bad at that time. Oh, so that should be the Balls Mahoney, Vader, or um, Buddy Roberts. Oh, Vader yeah. too. Vader was, oh uh, yeah, he smelled like, you know, rotten baloney. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, worst abuser of spray tan or baby oil? Who would just... Uh, that would be probably Robbie E. Uh, was probably one of the worst I'd ever seen as far as spray tan. Now, there was a kid that I did the dark match with in WCW who actually covered himself in Pam cooking spray, huh. non-stick cooking spray. So it was like grabbing a greased hot dog. It was just, <laughs> just, just shot out everywhere. Uh, yeah, but Robbie E with uh, Impact Wrestling would probably, as far as spray tan was concerned. Uh, wrestler who turned up most late to shows. Oh, that, there, that list is... Uh, probably one of the ones probably Scott Hall and Kevin Nash were probably pretty <laughs> notorious for doing that. <laughs> uh, what am I going to ask now? I've got a million of these. Uh, the stiffest or most reckless wrestler you ever was in the ring with? Uh, stiffest or most reckless? Because uh, there's a difference between being stiff or working snug and being reckless. Well, I'll be specific and, then. Uh, Let's say mm-hmm. reckless. Just hit you in the wrong places. Uh, well, there's a lot of those. A lot of those guys would, unfortunately, these days. Um, on a on an upper type of level in WWE or 
you know, higher levels like that, there really wasn't, there wasn't anybody that was really reckless. They were in the, you know, they were all capable professionals. Now you get out on the independence. It's a, it's a free fall. Mm. You know, there are a lot of guys that are very, very careless and very dangerous. The smoothest worker you've ever wrestled. Although, uh, uh, not saying because he's here, but like Shane Douglas, um, would be on that list. Candido, uh, Benoit, uh, several, lots of guys. Just you know, like a night off. Uh, what else? I'll, I'll I'll skip it down a few. Uh, biggest ladies man. Oh, thanks. <laughs> 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 biggest biggest ladies man, Marty Janetti. I so, bet he. Yo, oh, sorry, Shane. Uh, <laughs> A biggest ladies man, unquestionably. I mean, I, he's got a higher body count than Ric Flair. Mm. Mm. I said that on Dark Side of the Ring, and the producer was like, "What? No, no, no way!" I'm like, "Oh, no, no, no." You know, when Marty and Sean were real, and, and look, this isn't Marty and Sean telling me this. This is the boys. This was back in the '80s when you know they, we were working seven nights a week. They were out on the road, you know, 300 days a year, and like they get done, they go to the hotel, and there were women in the hallway sitting in the hallway waiting to take the turn to get in the room, you know, lines up. They just walk out and pick one, pick another one, you know, yeah. and, and, and I've been to Marty's home, his old home in, in Orlando, Florida, where he had boxes of photographs and photo albums full of just absolutely drop dead gorgeous women that he had been with. Polaroid, you know, Polaroid at the, Polaroid, at the time. Polaroid, yeah, yeah, yeah and, and just photographs, yeah, yeah. You must have got that from Gene Simmons. I believe that he did that as well. I have no idea, but I, I'm telling <laughs> you, Marty it was when it came to women was is is still to this day remarkable. Uh, so I'll just I'll tell you this right. Apparently, Gene Simmons used to do the Polaroid thing, but he'd always make him put the hands over the head as well. I think it's just to see <laughs> just how fantastic the, the boobies were i don't know I yeah don't know maybe the, that could be i don't know uh yeah. the loudest spot caller mm. i don't i don't no one directly comes to mind off of that can't think of anybody because you'd have to be outside the ring to be able to hear it you know what yeah. i mean um, so i really couldn't tell you 